Okay, can we make some noise in the studio, please? Uh, I'd like a round of applause for our guest on a Tuesday morning, Mr. Riz Ahmed. Good morning! Yay, Riz! We love you! Woo! Hi, Riz. That was really convincing. Did you like that? Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, you liked that? Over, like, wow, where's the, who's that girl? Who is that? What's going on? Yeah, exactly. It was me. Um, Riz Ahmed, good morning. How you doing, brother? I'm really good. How are you? I'm really good. I'm glad to be here. I'm really happy you're here. I, uh, I've, I've watched two things this year that have made me obsessed with Riz Ahmed. Uh, the Night Of, which we're going to talk about, and I, I properly got obsessed with that. But also the movie that I saw last night that is totally infiltrated my mind and my dreams is Star Wars Rogue One which is huge. And I saw it last night, and congratulations on that movie. Oh, thank you so much. Because it's mega, isn't it? It's proper it's cool quite, movie. Yeah, it's quite full on. Like we were just saying, it's, it's, it's quite different to a lot of the other Star Wars movies mm-hmm. in important ways, but hopefully if there's nothing in this familiar that people will still really connect to it who love the, you know, I mean, the real fans. How is it when you get that call for Star Wars? Because so cool. And then they're like, hey, Riz, do you want to be in Star Wars? Is that what happened? Were they, like, beating your door down? Um, to be honest, it was uh, it was a relief when I finally got the call to tell me that I'd be in the film because I had, um, I thought I'd burn all my bridges with the director. Right. What did you do to him? I started spamming him. What? Really aggressively. What, like, put me in Star Wars! Well, a little more thinly veiled. Yeah, a bit bit more, cu- you know, undercover than that. But basically... Um, he sent me the kind of the, the script to do the audition, to record the audition, made the mistake of giving me his email address. <laughs> and I'm like a bit psycho obsessive with my work. Uh-huh. I love it, but I go down a black hole. It stops even being about getting a result. I'm just uh-huh. like, oh, what if I did it like this? So over the next three days, I sent him like 14 different versions of the scene. Just kept spamming him every so time. So hang on, you're recording yourself pretending to be in Star Wars and sending them to the director over and over and over. Yeah, to begin with, I just sent him two versions. <laughs> right. And then I woke up the next day and I didn't get a reply. So instead of thinking he must be busy, I thought, let me just send him more. And I just <laughs> kept doing that every few hours, like a habit. <laughs> oh my God, stop! Yeah, I know. And I just kept doing And I kept doing like different accents and different costumes. And just like, being, I'm sure there was cool, yeah. And how were you, were you like making these costumes at home? Like getting a curtain around your head? And... It was. At one point, actually, I thought, wouldn't it be good if you had a headband? But I didn't have one, so I just wore a tie, like a school tie, <laughs> around my forehead. It's amazing that you're here, actually. It's amazing um, that I'm not in prison for the restraining yeah, order, yeah. to be honest. Harassment. Yeah. yeah. So you sent him all those tapes, and then eventually he was like, oh, my God, I mean, we just have to put him in Star Wars. It was the only way to make it stop, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> I'll just put him in the movie. Yeah, I mean, he emailed me a few days later. Later and he was like, um, look, thank you for sending me all these auditions. Please stop sending me these auditions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. And then it was it took a few weeks and then he called me. So I was just I was just relieved he wasn't, yeah, taking out a restraining order. I do like that though, because that means you, you wanted the role, you were dedicated, you were persistent, and you know. I'm you also that I'm a psychopath. And you're also completely insane. Yeah, Have exactly. you done this before for other jobs where that method of getting a job has worked? Um, let me think. Strangely, no. No. Strangely, <laughs> no. that that usually doesn't work. But now it's yeah. worked. It's worked once, and now that I've been badly, I've been encouraged. Is really dangerous. Yeah. I mean, yeah. any film you want, just keep sending them tapes in. Yeah. Over know. and over. Oh. Over and over. It's a nice message to put out there. And so I saw the movie last night, and I have a, I have a few questions about the movie. That I mean, there's stuff I want to talk to you about, but I feel like if we talk about it, people will go crazy with Star Wars. Right. Because you can't say what happens, because people want to go and see this, and you can't definitely can't say what happens at the end. How hard is it to keep a Star Wars secret a secret? Oh, man. Um, in a way, you realize that, you know, the anticipation and the mystery and the suspense is part of people's enjoyment. You don't want to ruin that for people. But also, to some extent, you're just like, you've got to get it out, man. Uh-huh. So I just kind of start telling people who don't really care at all. <laughs> right. Like my parents. <laughs> yeah. So I'd be like telling my mum. And my dad has kind of seen Star Wars, so he's still even vaguely interested. So I had to kind of lock him out of it. But I'd be like, you know, going to visit my parents, she'd be like cooking me some food and be like, usually I don't talk to her about work, you know. But I just go like, Mom, guess what? This happens, this, 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 this. And she'd be like, oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah, listen, have some more roti. You know, she didn't really <laughs> care. care at all. Just in one ear, out the other. So that was good. That's that's good parenting though, I yeah, feel. Yeah, thank you, Mommy, for not listening. Do you know what I mean? That's good. They're not, they're not gassed that you're in Star Wars, which no, is that's gonna be, that's gonna keep you sane. Yeah. Sane-ish. 
gonna keep you sane. Um, but I wanted to ask, how is it? How is it when you're acting? And you know, there's that. There's there's you know these like big blobs. I don't know the technical terms. A bit like your mum here. That's an offensive term. You call my mum a blob? No, I don't mean Whoa, that. I mean, I'm, Nick, I'm confused easy, like your tiger. mother. Wow. No, your mum's not the blob. Get up early in the morning just to come in here. <laughs> so, you know, American journalists are so much nicer. <laughs> I've, been, I've been warned about this. Gotcha, gotcha journalism. I mean, the blobs in the film, yeah, like those right. things, those like big frogs and things. Yeah. How is it, because they're not real, so how is it acting, pretending you're talking to like, you know, that big sassy robot or a blob? <laughs> Well, to be honest, and this is going to sound crazy, they actually, those blobs are real, and so are those robots. What do you mean? Um, they really build everything. There's hardly <gasps> any blue screen oh, and really? green screen. There's, I mean, there is, but most of the blue screen and, and green screen was for kind of distant scenery kind of stuff. Right. But if you're kind of, if there's a mountain nearby, they build it. It's mental. It's wow. absolutely insane. You know, there'll be spaceships just there chilling. You know, robots just like wandering by. Um, the creatures department is its own department. It's yes. there's hardly any CGI, particularly for characters. I mean, even um, Alan Tudyk, who plays the droid K two S O, he was actually physically on set, um, on stilts, so he was seven foot tall, wearing a one piece. Uh, spandex unitard which is what he normally wears which I was all right. <laughs> it's fine um, this came from home yeah with, uh, with kind of motion trackers on it not even with ping pong balls so it wasn't distracting it was just interacting with you know Alan on, stil on stilts so it, they really build the world for you and um yeah, it makes it so much easier. Is it easier, that? So much it's easier. Is the pressure not on, though, when you step on set and you're like, oh, my God, that mountain was well expensive. I've got to be weird. <laughs> I've got to be well good at acting now. Try not to break the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it is kind of humbling, particularly when you just pick up any random any random piece of, like, any prop on, say, this mug in a Star Wars world, right? You're sat there, you're doing a scene, the mug's not even on camera. You pick up that mug in between takes, you just be like, your mind will be blown. There will be alien writing and like wow. ancient engravings on it and like screens and, and flicks and switches. And you realize everyone who's worked on these films has grown up, you know, wanting to work on these films. And so they go above and beyond. They go completely overboard almost, like me spamming the director, <laughs> but with props. And, um, and you realize, wow, this is mad. This isn't even on camera. And um, and that's when you steal it. Yeah. Did you nick out? What did you get? Listen, find me on eBay, mate. We'll talk. Right, more from Riz after this. Are talking Star Wars, Rogue One. Riz Ahmed is here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what you say. Yeah, Good right. morning. Oh right. Yeah. Hey. How you doing? There we go. I'm here. Sorry. Yeah, um, so I saw the movie last night and, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was there is there is a scene where well quite a long whoa, scene. Whoa. Don't oh, worry, oh, I've got okay, this, right, I've got yeah. this. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ruin anything. I'm not gonna whoa. ruin anything. Where there is so much rain, a lot of rain. Now, I'm guessing they're like, oh God, Riz is like, you know, he's, he's probably gonna be up for, you know, an award for, you know, the night of like Golden Globe, something like that. Can you specify what temperature that rain is? Or is that just like cold hosepipe? Or can you be like, mm, 28 degrees, please? Yeah, well, you know me very well by now, Nick. Uh -huh. yeah, I know the temperature of your preferred yeah, rainwater. Yeah, if it goes below 27, I'm not, mm. I'm not coming out my train. He's out of it. No exactly. way. Exactly. It's, you know what, that's the thing. It's on the first day you show up to work on on this, you know, a Star Wars movie and it's so exciting uh -huh. and stormtroopers running around everywhere and they built this whole world, like I said, which is amazing. And then day two, you're like, oh my God, I'm just so tired and wet and <laughs> covered in bruises and, you know, need to sleep. And and it's just, um, it was full on. And, you know, I think particularly this film is, it's not a walk in the park. Do you know what I mean? It's There's a lot in there that will be familiar to the fans and they'll enjoy that and may even find it strangely comforting to see Darth Vader. Um but it is also quite edgy and gritty. Yeah. It's a war movie, really. It is, yeah. It's like saving private... Vader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, that's the tagline. That yeah. should be on there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, do you know what it always makes me whenever I watch a Star Wars movie and Rogue One was no different, I always want a glass of water. Everyone looks well dehydrated, don't they? 
don't they? Up in space or like in a dusty planet. I'm always like, mm, well thirsty. I, I love, yeah, I love that you're watching these films going, ooh, he oh, needs a shower. <laughs> he hasn't watched his shower. hair in weeks. Yeah, he looks like he's got greasy hair. How did you feel about the long hair look? I think it looks pretty cool on you, you know? Like it. I really like it. greasy. Well, it was very greasy, but I'm guessing that was for the role. It, it, yeah, yeah, sure, that was for the role. Yeah. Yeah, that was for the role, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they, like, what was it? Was that hair extensions? Do you have to go, do you have to go home with those at the end of the day? Did you have to keep them in or do they put them in every day? Um, you're ruining the illusion. The I magic know. of the movie. I, well, these are questions. The people are going to go on. in wondering whether the hair is real. It's not real, I don't think. Whoa, it looked too thin to be um, it is. It, it was a wig actually, and the reason it was a wig is because I had to. I'd shaved my head quite recently before that. It wasn't too long after the night of, and then another film I did called City of Tiny Lights. So I had a shaved head for both of them. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I was really enjoying it, man. I'm I was liking kinda it. Kind of giving it the old like shampoo ad flick <laughs> every morning. Like Beyonce flick. Yeah, exactly. Quite like it. Quite liked it. It's quite a good look. Step. It's a good look. And so your other smash, along with Star Wars, is the night off. Which, as I was just saying during that that record, then I have a terrible attention span. Really, really do. But the night off, I really stuck with and really genuinely loved it. And we all did on the show. Oh. And it made me and Fifi so anxious for weeks when we were watching it um congratulations because nominate for golden globe last night oh thank you so much yeah thank you for sticking with it well yeah, i mean appreciate it it does it I mean that is anxiety over eight episodes doesn't it it stresses me out like nothing else that it's like an exam <laughs> that's the funny thing is that people kind of been coming up to me for this show going thank you so so much you know i was wicked really like the show you really gave me anxiety though <laughs> you really stressed me out you ruined my weekend. Yeah. Well, I loved it, but you ruined it. Because um, it is quite intense. It's, it's full on. And I think people are ready for that kind of stuff, to be mm -hmm. honest, you know, that really goes there, whether it's with Rogue One or the Night Of kind of, you know, TV shows and um, films that just feel a little gritty and kind of take you to that place. You yeah. Know, a, bit of a bit of a roller coaster. It makes you really think that show. And Rogue One does as well, you know prompts a lot of questions it does and um, i saw that loads of american interviewers and people in america were, were shocked that you when you start speaking you come on the show you're not american and it's blowing america's mind i've heard they're like what you're you were acting that accent <laughs> Yeah, they say it just like that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, that's me. It's yeah. crazy, right? Um, how do you perfect that American accent? Because it is, it's very good. It starts off as a complete mess. I mean, does it? Yeah, I mean, I basically have this idea where I will, as soon as I'll land in the city or turn up, you know, where we're going to be shooting, I just start talking in that accent. Right. So the first person I meet at the airport, you know, the the um, assistant directors or the production managers, whoever, I'll just be talking in the accent. But the thing is, I haven't had a chance to get it right. So I basically <laughs> just land and like speaking in an Irish accent <laughs> randomly. Top of the morning to your yeah, New York like, City. How are you doing there? <laughs> and, uh, and it's not, and it's not a strong look, uh -huh. but I just kind of think, I've got to just try and jump into the deep end because in a way, then I'm locked into it. Yeah. Because if I switch, switch back, then they'll think I'm a weirdo. No, they already <laughs> don't think I'm a weirdo. So you're, you're when you're on set or on camera or off camera pretending you're American? I, I'm just talking in that accent. If Love people that. ask me where I'm from, I go London and they go, but hang on a minute, you don't have a... And then I'll just go like, would you like some coffee? <laughs> would you... Ah, oh. yeah. And just change the subject and like get on with... Uh, Pretending I'm American. <laughs> I love just basically. committing to it. Yeah. Incredible. I love the idea that the reason I stay in the accent is so they don't think I'm a weirdo. <laughs> this is the worst it's strategy for not people not thinking you're weird. Yeah, it's slightly weird. Yeah. Uh, uh, but we you. loved it and, and massive big ups on that and congratulations on the uh, Golden Globe you. nomination. When do you find out if you win that? Is that January, February, something like that? Uh, I mean, the, the awards are start of January. But to be honest, man, I'm just... I never in a million years thought that I'd be nominated and to be up there as well with John Turturro who's also in yeah. it. It's quite rare that they nominate two actors yeah. from the same show so that feels really special and um, and yeah and, and also all the other people nominated like Brian Cranston's Absolute G yes. my favourite drug dealing nutter um, and then you've got uh, Courtney B. Vance as well who I don't know if you saw in Trial of O.J. Simpson he was oh yeah I love yeah, that yeah Johnny Cochran yeah, so love that. awesome and I'm very on Tom Hiddleston so yeah I'm just glad to be at the have a seat at the table well congrats on that and congratulations as well on Rogue One a Star Wars story um, make sure you go and see it everybody out this weekend it's, it's, it's wonderful isn't it
It is, it is. Yeah. It's proper good. Go and see it. I wouldn't describe it as wonderful. I'd say it's hardcore, a badass. Epic. Oh, wonderful's all right as well. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, Riz, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. See you soon. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it.